please welcome Tom Green. All right, great to be here. Good Thanks. to see That's you, good, man. Good to be back in Philly. This is exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so glad you brought your dog. I got my dog here. Yeah, Charlie's with me. Yeah, and, uh, I didn't see. Yeah. Right there. Charlie got a little, uh, not spooked, but perked up when we started cheering. Oh. <laughs> okay, buddy. Yeah, she's a rescue from the Bahamas. Uh, She's uh, she's a, called a pot cake dog. She's one of these uh, island dogs. Uh, you know, years of uh, mixed breed. <laughs> nice. She's a good girl. Yeah. I, I live in a farm now. I. Uh, That's I, what we heard. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I left Los Angeles after 20 years, sold my house, and moved back to Canada and got a farm. I was. Eh? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I was watching a lot of your stuff, and I I love so much of this this notion of first off, you're in Canada. Were you about an hour north of New York? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, uh, the, it looks fantastic. It is the antithesis of what twenty years in L.A. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I, I never really felt at home in L.A. I feel instantly at home here because it's. I, I love being out in nature, and I've got a lot of wilderness and yeah uh, how long was that idea brewing in your head to i gotta get back to that life or get back to you know to I, probably about the last five years before okay. i left i was thinking i kind of wanted to leave but then uh, when the when the covid happened i uh, accelerated the touring, the touring stopped and everything and right. uh, i had this time to move and i, I did it are, so. are now i don't know a lot about your current personal life are you married do you have kids or anything like that? i have a mule Yes. yes. Okay. <laughs> Which are awesome, by the way. Yeah. I have a mule and a donkey and uh, some chickens. Okay. And, uh, What's and, your donkey's uh, name? Uh, the donkey's name is Kia. And, okay. Uh, and Fanny is the mule. All is right. Kia she's... very affectionate? Uh, yeah, very much so, yeah. yeah I, yeah. I asked because I was recently at a farm and I couldn't believe yeah. how the donkey, like, wanted to be pet, wanted to be in the circle of the people that were, yeah. you know, there to visit. It was pretty cool. The mule is great. If you go on my Instagram, it can, you can see, I'll still pull it up if you want to see, but, uh, yeah, there she is. She's like, uh, where is she? Anyways. Uh, they, do, they do get attached to people because there's tons she's of like you. a giant animal, right? She's a giant, like a horse. You know? <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. You're right. yeah, yeah, I ride around on her on the property. She, I mean, she, her mother was a Percheron paint mix horse. So, oh. And, uh, and her... Uh, there's the donkey and her daddy. A, a mule is a cross between a donkey and a horse. Correct. There's the classic so, distinction, yeah, and so. I always get it confused. But but um, she's great. I ride, I ride. I'm learning all about this now. It's I'm um, riding around the property on her and uh, out there in the wilderness how all many, day. How many acres? Uh, quite a few, 150. So, dude, wow. that is sensational. Uh, so you can get lost out there if you're not careful. You have a, you have a, a, a pond on the or a lake. Yeah, or, and a yeah. lake and a pond, and it backs into much bigger sort of empty Canadian wilderness. So there's wolves and, and Bear. bears Obviously. and all sorts of So do you have to worry about your animals? Uh, well, yeah, a little bit. The chickens, they got the chickens this year. Yeah, oh, did so they? I cried as well. Oh. I <laughs> cried when my chickens were killed by the coyotes. I mean, yeah. And then yeah. my neighbors are real farmers, you know, and I think they're kind of laughing at me because <laughs> I'm crying about my dead chickens. I would cry too. I said, do farmers cry? <laughs> he said, not over their dead chickens. <laughs> Oh, my neighbors think I'm a wuss. No, but, uh, I commend you for crying over your chickens. Yeah. I've, I've heard a number of people who get chickens, and, you know, obviously if times are tough, or just for whatever reason, they end up with chickens. That's why I got them. Yeah, never, but, but, uh, but, but they, they'll get them, and then they realize, oh, my God, they're actually kind of nice. and They're and, really nice. And yeah. they have personalities. Yeah. And it, a lot of times it turns people off of eating chicken, per yeah. se. They'll continue to eat the eggs. But Yeah, I, I just got them for eggs. They're not really meat Right, eating. Uh, well, the coyotes thought differently, but uh, <laughs> yeah, they're uh, they're for 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 eggs, and I get a lot of eggs. My cholesterol's through the roof. It's uh, yeah, it's uh, no, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, they would. It's uh, it's been an interesting experience for sure, and I'm getting pretty good at riding this mule too. It's it's interesting. It's a, it's a real psychological uh, sort of. You know, you really have to learn the psychology of 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 an animal and, and a mule specifically. They're extremely smart. You have to learn to communicate with them sort of non-verbally. They sense your energy. You, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about human interaction really through through a mule because they don't, you know, you're not speaking verbally, right. them, but they really feel your, your uh, if you feel nervous about something, they sense that. If you, you know, if you're nervous about riding into the woods, they sense that, then they don't want to go into the woods. So I think you have that's to express fascinating. a certain amount of confidence. Yeah. And, uh, and you have to sort of fake it till you make it, kind of thing. Because <laughs> uh, I, 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 at first, I don't. I did, like I said, I didn't know anything about riding a, a mule, and then all of a sudden, I'm realizing 
if I act like I don't know what I'm doing, then she's really going to sense that. So you have to really kind of be How confident, did, ride where, look where you want to go, and and to express that kind of, uh, you know, alpha sort of uh, did you, lead did you have like a leader thing. You did know? you have like an avatar kind of moment where you you know that where you connect with the animal and and uh, you know the ponytails are are connected and you said okay, I think we're seeing each other now. We understand yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. There is. It's kind of a you're progressively getting a little bit more connected. Wow. And uh, you know, it's. I mean, we ride off into the off into the wilderness together and uh just sort of i go off for the day on her and and uh you know you're going through the woods and weaving through trees and going up and little hills <laughs> and everything i think that's fantastic yeah. Yeah. yeah how long have you been on the uh on the farm here just coming up it'll be coming up on three years this July. wow okay yeah, yeah but but going into it did you just kind of dive right in or did you do a little bit of research how am i going to pull this off how am i going to manage uh, all this or did you just kind of buy it and go well, I, I, would, I didn't originally have the animals at the beginning. So the right. first year I just, I found this place and uh, it was really just more about, uh, it, it's it's pretty close to where my parents live and uh, and I like the property. And uh, uh, But then uh, it has these 200 year old barns. So I uh, I thought oh, it'd be kind of cool to put a put put a mule in there. So then <laughs> that's, that started last June. I just got that. It's okay. good about you, a year I've had the animals. So. You hire somebody uh, along with it? Like, I, I would love to be able to purchase a farm, but I would... So much work. If, so, well, but I don't know how to do it. So I'm like, yeah. can I purchase a farm and then hire somebody who was tending to the farm to begin with? Just depends how often you're going to be there. Like, if you're there every day... Mm -hmm. And you could pretty much do it yourself. It's not that much work looking after a mule yeah. or a horse. <laughs> yeah. You just they just eat grass, you know? They just eat the grass in the field. What province are we in right now? Ontario, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and so you're you're but you're traveling, so I assume uh, periodically, not unless the parents come over, uh to, to tend to the farm and take care of the animals. Yeah. Well I have a I do have an assistant who helps me with it, and then my parents are actually pop by and stay at the place. Well, hired hand. Can. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. honestly, you. But that's that's. This sort is of, a Jack Kerouac kind yeah. of. Yeah, uh, I'm gone a lot doing stand up. No, I mean, I I try to I'm trying to spend more time at home now though. But I have been on the road for a month. We drove here this time, see. So, ah. so this every other time I've been here, I've flown from Los Angeles up here for the weekend. But now I'm. Uh, I'm driving, so I've been on the road for a month. We've just done about 40 shows. We've gone all through Michigan, Ohio, <laughs> uh, Indiana, Kentucky, and uh, now we're over here in Pennsylvania. We're going to mm. be in Jim Thorpe and Newtown. Cool. And, uh, and I'm here, you know, weeknights this time. I'm not here on the weekend. I'm here. I was there. had a show last night at Helium and one tonight and one tomorrow night. Yeah. Jim Thorpe's a great little town. I think you're going to love it. Um, I, I, every now and then I think about um, going to a place that's away from a city, right? And um, I think one of the things that I would miss the most is accessibility to an airport because obviously with an airport, you can get to a lot of different places um, quickly uh, via flight. What, uh, what do you miss the most uh, being out in the wilderness? Yeah, well, it's, uh, the airport thing's interesting because I've just sort of changed the way I tour now. I, I Like I said, I, I, I there's a... First of all, being in the Northeast, there's way many more, more so many more cities, right? right? So I don't really have to get on a plane anymore. And living in Los Angeles, I'd have to get on a plane every weekend. Now I just jump in my truck. I'll drive to Buffalo or Syracuse, New York, or Toronto or Montreal, Ottawa. And, and, then, uh, and then this tour, we did a whole month. So I've been in uh, Detroit. Uh, Dude, you're Flint, clocking many miles. Flint, yeah. Flint Michigan, yeah. Lansing, uh, Hobart, Indiana, Kentucky, Cincinnati, Columbus, Cleveland, um, and uh, Lexington, Louis we, Louisville. And, wow, you and now over here. So that's that's been just the last month. So you did about a year's worth of, of van life, right? You you the, yep. uh, right out of L.A. You you did you and that has become a thing. I I was you know reading some of your stuff and looking at some of the video work and and um, you know you're chronicling so much of it. And you discovered something that, that I think is, um, it's great if you can find out about yourself that you can be by yourself and do it well. Yeah. And that was sort of a revelation for you, right? Yeah. Had you suspected you would be good at it or was it completely from left field? Uh, well, you know, so that was a whole, that was sort of what kicked off my, you know, de decision to go get this country property, right? right. I, 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 I went, when COVID happened, I kind of was looking for something to do because I stopped touring and and uh, after 20 years of always being out in the road and doing something, I got a little stir crazy. So I got this this camper van. There's these guys, they actually were on Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. and I found them online, but uh, 
It's called Boho Vans, and they're really cool, cool it's like guys. Too. Super, super energy they, efficient. They take, they take Ram ProMaster vans and they convert them into a. There's a bed and a solar panels on the roof. And, yeah. And uh, and a fridge in it and everything. Yeah, there's the van there. You can see it. And so I I I, I decked it out as a sort of a video production wow. studio, and I took my cameras and my editing stuff, and I drove off into. Uh, into the deserts of New Mexico and Arizona oh, and Utah. It's, it's, I'm jealous. And I spent about the first year of COVID just going around making these short videos and with Charlie. And uh, Charlie's actually named after Travels with Charlie. Oh, Charlie, wow. yeah. John Steinbeck. Steinbeck. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah, I was, uh, I got, I got the dog in the van at the same time. And my dad said, oh, like Travels with Charlie. I said, what's that? He said, the Steinbeck novel. I said, I don't read. He said, I know. That's why I'm telling you about this. Um, <laughs> did you but, read uh, it? Yeah, yeah, I did read it. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. All right. It's See, great. if, uh, if I were to do this and it is on my list of things to do, that's exactly where I would start in this country is is down in, in, in Arizona, Utah, New Mexico. Yeah. I absolutely love that area. I was just that we have a client um, called uh, Southampton Hot Tubs, and they're right next to an, an outfit that does this exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. So you get that van and like all in. I mean, it's about a hundred, right? If you get like the 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 Ram Pro that you were talking about, it's like fifty. Grand? Yeah, so fifty for the van, fifty one ish for the van, and then like depending on well, the, the how you bougie know. you want to get, right. it can be anywhere from thirty to fifty yeah. to yeah. outfitted. But you, you were stacking yeah. it with with uh, production equipment, though. You 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 were conducting yeah. your interviews from out in the middle of nowhere. I was doing a podcast out there, and yeah. love it. But I, I built a recording studio in the van, and I'm recording some music out there and stuff. So, but I mean, the thing that the thing that was most amazing about it. Uh, if anyone ever gets a chance to to do this, is is the desert itself is so full of incredible, mysterious and uh, and unbelievable things. Yeah, petroglyphs, uh, so much so much evidence of and uh, uh, of Na Native American ruins. Uh, you're going to, uh, to cities that you yeah. little cities out in the desert of st stone cities that were. There's a place called Chaco Canyon, which was one of my favorite spots in in uh, New Mexico. And uh, if you look that up on my YouTube, you can see the the um, the it's it's sort of like Machu Picchu. You know, oh, it's, it's, which it's is... a, literally a full stone city in this canyon that was uh, only discovered in the fifties. It had been buried. They've excavated it all. But I it's watch really... ancient aliens all the time, and yeah. all, they're always in Machu Picchu. And all of these, any yeah. of the History Channel shows where they find. And you're right. There's there's tons of areas and towns like that, and and it's just sort of endless. You, you yeah. just you go down this rabbit hole and you start looking. It's it's not really talked about a lot in in this country. Really, all the the stuff that's out there that that you can go see, you know. And so you just start driving and go and researching it, and then every sort of every day you're finding some incredible petroglyphs that nobody's seen before. These, yeah. these you know, that, that literally nobody talks about. You can sort of hardly find anything about it online. And it's you're amazing. looking at these. And we're, we're not talking about just a few of them. It's yeah. the whole desert's full of this incredible stuff. So it's really kind of uh, exciting, actually, because you feel a little bit like, uh, especially when you're out there by yourself. You said being out there by yourself. I was all by myself out there making these films and making music and does it, uh, does it put it, i always love stuff like that i love it, first off it's a zen experience and also it puts you i think in the context of the universe yeah yeah it's 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 it is kind of a very calming thing yeah and uh and uh, and uh, i I'd recommend people go explore the southwestern American U.S., mm -hmm. if they, uh, the desert, if you can. If you're tuning in, it's Tom Green, who's going to be at Helium Comedy Club uh, tonight and tomorrow. And there's uh, two shows tonight, 8.15 and Thursday. No, I'm sorry, one show tonight, one show tomorrow night, 8.15, night, 8 tomorrow. I wanted to ask you about this more removed lifestyle that you're living. What is, because I would think that informing, uh, you know, inspiring you for comedy, for your for your show, um you know, less interaction with people. What's informing your comedy now? Well, I mean, uh, there's, I mean, there's, I have a lot of interaction with people because I'm, well, I do stand up and yeah. I have, I have, I have, uh, you know, great neighbors out there and it's just uh, local people and it's different, different kind of people. I'm not in LA anymore and it's, uh, it's actually a lot more real <laughs> where I am now. Yeah, I would know? imagine. It's, yeah. Uh, you're not, I'm not in the middle of a show business city it's uh, people are real farmers and fishermen and hunters and and uh, when I go to the to the
grocery store or, or, or somewhere like that. I'm not running into uh, celebrities and uh, people in the business of, of show. So, so it's kind of actually a lot more of a real uh, experience. And, uh, and I'm also home around family. And, and so it's actually really, really nice. I think that's kind of yeah. funny because yeah, yeah. If, you, if you think about your earlier career, and obviously, I mean, like you, you started so much. You set in motion so many things. Right? Like you were jackass before jackass. And and all of that stuff. And, yeah, and, and Impractical yet, Jokers yes. and all and, of that. And yeah. your, your parents, who you <laughs> visited a lot of torture on. Those poor people. Yep. Here you are. They still, they still talk to me. <laughs> okay. They still talk they, they to were, They were happy that I, I came back to Canada. <laughs> and, and they actually were happy that I live yeah. near them now. And there's a ton of footage yeah. of you, of your, your mom and everybody loving your, your, your lifestyle. And it's, so they uh, uh, clearly don't carry a grudge. No, no, yeah. we, they're, they're having a lot of fun with the farm. And uh, I mean, that's a big part of... of, of I do talk about, you know, adapting to this new lifestyle in, in my stand-up and, and uh, riding it around on a mule that refuses to turn left and uh, <laughs> things like this. So, so it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's definitely uh, actually a real whole new, you know, fodder for, uh, for a comedy. And I actually I have a new television show that we're shooting now that I'm, I've, you know, there's, it's funny, I'm busier than I've been in years, actually, since moving back to Canada. I've restarted my production company in Canada. I'm directing mm. a new TV show called Tom Green Country, which is coming out this year on Amazon Prime. Very nice. And uh, also a documentary uh, that I'm putting together for Amazon Prime, which is about the sort of history of my career, going back to the Tom Green show and uh, stand-up comedy and everything. And It's amazing. And then there's a stand-up special as well. And we're shooting, actually, we're shooting for the stand-up special tonight at uh, Helium. Ah. And I'm um, filming all of my shows, and we're going to create a sort of a one-hour stand-up special of this set. So It's interesting. I was thinking about you the other day. There's a, uh, a documentary out about uh, Steve Martin. It's a two-parter. It covers oh, yeah. his early career and in his more current career. Yeah, yeah. And you remind me of him in his earlier career at the beginning of your career because he set out to do things that people weren't doing he yes. was like you know stand up has this kind of routine uh you know it's punchline setup or set up punchline setup punchline he went with punchline set no anyway <laughs> but he decided i'm going to do things that make people maybe feel a little uncomfortable and the humor will be in that in that they feel uncomfortable about this it once they get it and can laugh about it and you came along at a time that that was sorely needed as well. Mm. Was it just your own? Did, because he, he had made up his mind, I'm going to do it this way. Um, but were you just doing you or did you also have that kind of premeditated, I'm going to make people feel, I'm going to, I'm going to put people in uncomfortable situations and find the humor in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I kind of, uh. I was a huge fan of David Letterman, so there was mm -hmm. a lot of influence there. You know, me watching him as a kid go out and contort you know, the talk do, show, do funny things in the street, and yeah. yeah, kind of disrupt and dismantle the Johnny Carson show and yeah. make it his own. And uh, you know, so that was that was a big uh, a big influence. But I was also a skateboarder, and I watched a lot of skateboarding videos. And that was a bit more punk rock and a little bit more uh, subversive. You were doing rap too, weren't you? Did, did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So you had all this stuff that came well before. Yeah. W w so when did the notion of being <laughs> this sort of comedian provocateur? Well, I started doing stand up when I was 16. Uh, I think it kind of came from uh, just being a, sort of an attention, attention seeking goofball right. class clown, you know, moved around a lot. My dad was military. Canadian military, so we were always moving around to different cities, and I was the new kid in class, and I kind of ended up finding I could make friends if I would kind of, you know, trip over a garbage can on my first day and make right. a big scene, and so, <laughs> right. so that 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 came kind of my personality, but uh, but you know, I um, yeah, I, uh, I I guess I just I also just found it really uh, interesting time when the uh, video cameras became something that were accessible to people. Yeah, really portable. Yeah, and, yeah. You can, and that's sort of where the kind of man on the street uh, sort of confusing the public came. You know, you could take your comedy out of a studio and just be running down the street and we, doing. Uh, I reference your stuff, stuff all the time. Man. I'm thinking of, yeah. there's one that I, I always think about. You're you're talking to an older gentleman. You tell him you have a depth <laughs> perception problem, and you just keep sticking the microphone <laughs> right on his nose. Yeah, and the yeah. guy is just answering the questions and not yeah, but concerned at all that this person is shoving this on my on my face. Yeah, there was a there was a period of time. Uh, where, you know, it was before social media, before cell phones, before everybody had a video camera, before everybody had a social media page, where if you walked up to somebody with a camera and a handheld microphone, 
they kind of almost froze a little bit. They sort of got very nervous. They felt like they were being interviewed by the news. Right. I'm on television, and and people would become almost a little bit, uh, uh, you know, deer in headlights. Deer in headlights, exactly. And so, so sometimes I would kind of play with that, and you know, rub the, just start rubbing the <laughs> microphone on their face, and they were that. so concentrating on what they wanted to say, they didn't know. Oh, should I say stop doing that? When we got on MTV, we kind of took it a step further. I would uh, uh, spread some uh, dog poo on the microphone. I remember oh, clearly. And then ahead. I wouldn't actually rub it in their face, <laughs> but I would uh, put it as close to their oh, nose as possible. And, you know, you'd have this sort of piece of actual dog poo on yeah. a microphone right under their nose, and then I'd ask them about, you know, the Wimbledon. And, oh, well, Pete Sampras. They'd be talking about Pete Sampras, but their nose would be twitching. And... <laughs> So that was always a lot of fun. Tom, it, it really seems to me like <laughs> you as a no person... No poo on the microphone here. That would no, be no, 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 no. I didn't even notice that. I was so nervous we about... We keep it clean. Uh, yeah. um, you've evolved quite a bit over the years and, and changed your perspective. And, and uh, has your comedy changed much? I mean, like, if you come to Helium, are people going to see the Tom Green that they saw on Road Trip? Or is it a very different act? Yeah, no, I mean, it's still very uh, much... Uh, an outrageous and uh, wild and crazy show. <laughs> I'm, still a, I'm still a wild and crazy guy. To, Are you? To yeah. Quote uh, Steve Martin, of course. Right. But uh, but uh, you know, it, it's of course it's not a prop driven show. It's a, a I do bring a guitar with me. I play a little music at the end. Some songs I've been doing and some. But uh, it's a I'd say it's a cross between. I mean, it's ninety percent new material, but sometimes I dip into some of the older stuff and tell some stories about the older shows. It's and an interesting like mix because mm -hmm. you, you do one of my favorite bits, which is about, uh, and I think it might be from the last special you did about four years ago, maybe, perhaps, mm -hmm. where you're talking about, um, you know, how we evolve. You know, for Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon, we're hunched over and we, we're mm -hmm. standing erect and standing tall. You actually got up on a stool. And and uh, you're talking about now we're up and then we get the phones and we start to hunch over again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and it was brilliant. It was brilliant. Great observation. Yeah. I, I I find I I do find I like to talk about what's going on in our world today with social media and our addiction to it because it seems to be one of the things that uh, that everybody's going through and I, I and uh, and there is just a lot of comedy to be had about just the, all the changes that have happened in our in our society just in the last 20 years. It's I don't true. really get into politics too much. I I touch on it a little bit, but uh, but I try to kind of keep it somewhat uh, uh, you know non-political cuz uh, I want everybody to have a good time. We do that too. We're yeah. very divided in our society right now. I do talk about some some serious subjects like that and then try to make fun of it, you know, but uh, but yeah, these phones, they're driving us all nuts, and uh, I, I find that funny. It is. It one, is. one of the serious <laughs> subjects you did tackle on, on your uh, MTV show, which was uh, very admirable, was your testicular cancer. Probably the first time anybody ever really took it that personal. And for something that was a comedy show, you, you took a, a left turn there. And, yeah. they and took, they I, took my they, right testicle. They took your right <laughs> testicle on the left turn. Yeah. But you probably helped save a lot of lives to yeah. get people out and get checked. Yeah, you know, it's you know? It, it was uh, it was the intention to kind of uh, you know raise some awareness about uh, testicular cancer because it's you know the kind of thing that young guys get it. They watch MTV. They were watching my show um, when I got. Cancer, I had no idea that, that that was even a possibility. So when I felt some sort of pain down there, I was th thinking, okay, well, what is this? Uh, uh, fortunately, I'm a very paranoid person, so I went to the doctor right away. But a lot of young guys get embarrassed and they don't go to the doctor sure. right away. And yeah. then it, it spreads into into a sort of a place where it's a lot more of a problem. So, um, so you know, it was, it was interesting, though, because I, I would say I've probably had... I mean, definitely hundreds and hundreds of people over the last 20 years have contacted me online, written me letters, or come to my show and said they saw that show, guys saw that show, and then they went to the doctor and they got diagnosed with cancer. And, and I've had, it's, I mean, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting, unexpected, and it's kind sort of, of a, a beautiful thing that happens. Probably at least once a month, somebody comes to my show with their wife, almost in tears, sometimes in tears, wow. you know, saying thank you. you know, that show saved my life. And it's yeah. really kind of been like a very heavy but uh, nice uh, thing to uh, to see that people have uh, really kind of uh, been directly impacted yeah. by that it's special. Almost like, I think MTV should air it again. I've, I've, I've been really asked them to, but but I think they should air it again because it's uh, it really is a... A good, uh, a good thing that it does for people. Yeah, and it's I was like, surprised to see you. There was at one point you were really scared. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I remember seeing that. I was like, "Wow, okay, this is this is yeah, 
Yeah. The, the funny Tom Green showing yeah. that he's... That know. whole special's online. You can watch it. It's called The Cancer Special. That's yeah, the, I remember that's clearly the watching we came it. up with. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, yeah, it was uh, it was an interesting time for sure. Well, listen, and, and I think it's great that you saved some lies and stuff like that. But um, I think at that time you were a little selfish because uh, I was uh, invited out to the road trip press junket. Okay. Oh, no. And, uh, and you didn't go because you had cancer. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I really wanted to meet Tom <laughs> Green. Yeah. And I didn't get to meet Tom Green in okay. 2000. I had oh, to wait. Oh, my gosh. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. no, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah. I, I had such a great time at that road trip, and it re- was a real big bummer, obviously. Yeah, You yeah. were going through some stuff, but yeah, I was so yeah. bummed that I wouldn't. But now... I get to meet you here in Philadelphia. Yeah, no, that's great. So yeah, I forgot. For that. That is, is it, well, the timing was pretty crazy when I got cancer. I mean, that's why the Tom Green show stopped. I don't people don't really know that. You know, it's uh, it uh, you know it was it was it was you know the one of the number one shows on MTV at the time. This was before you know, like you said, Jackass came along. There wasn't yes. a lot of shows no. at the time. There was Road Rules, The Real World, mm-hmm. Celebrity Death Match, and the Tom Green Show, oh, and a couple of other shows. And, uh, you know, it was a hit show and uh, I would, you know, I, I ended up having to take a year off to go uh, take care of that. And then I ended up doing a bunch of movies and it's and crazy never, how you never really went back to the actual original Tom Green show. So, and that was it. How you frame it in your mind. I know uh, you were on Rogan and you talked about a, 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 a third degree burns you'd gotten on your feet. Oh, your yeah, scene. man, uh, you do your research. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, <laughs> but, but you, you, you also <laughs> raised the point where you talked about the testicular cancer and you also talked about this and you talked about. Uh, the way you go through that. So it was a serious, serious burn. You know, there was a bonfire out on the beach in Costa Rica, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. And, and, uh, but that was you, just two years ago, yeah. yeah. How, how are you doing, by the way? Is everything good? I'm doing pretty good, yeah. Okay. My, I mean, my foot looks like a pastrami sandwich with toes, but other than that, everything's <laughs> fine. It's like Freddy Krueger's face, but <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, like, I'm pretty, much, pretty much 99% better, although I do have a bit of scarring and stuff. Uh, it was a, kind of a bizarre situation. I was walking on the beach in Costa Rica and there had been a big bonfire there and someone they would buried it with sand and there was still a little bit of a fire left and I walked up to it to throw a piece of driftwood on it and my sandaled foot went into the sand and I uh, got third degree burns oh, all over my God. feet yeah. and the coals and was rushed to the hospital. I spent 10 days in a Costa Rican hospital. I had uh, three surgeries. I had uh, skin oh grafts put on my foot, 60 staples in my foot. Uh, and then I was airlifted by a medevac air ambulance back to wow. Sunnybrook Burn Center in Toronto. So wow. it was, uh, and then basically spent the next year uh, going to a doctor, the next six months at least, going in every, every twice a week to get my bandages changed and just make sure my foot didn't fall off. So we were kind of monitoring it for oh, infection. Damn. Was that, a, yeah, was that so. a, a, a tangible risk that you could yeah, lose the Yeah, yeah, no, because from infection, yes. Yeah. So yep. I was probably sent about, spent about six months uh, thinking uh, maybe I could lose my foot. And wow. it was very, uh, pretty traumatic, terrifying experience. But yeah, like I said on uh, on the, on the uh, Joe's Rogan. show, you know, on Rogan, uh, that, uh, that uh, you know, because kind of... Uh, it was is kind of similar to the cancer experience. I find it interesting when you get hospitalized uh, for something serious like that. Uh, you sort of stop and 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 uh, you sort of you immediately you go from you know not a care in the world uh, or you're worrying about work or worrying about you know th- thinking about you yeah. know random things that are stressing you out and all of a sudden all that stuff is erased and you're just focused on you know survival yeah. or making sure I don't get my foot amputated and all those things that you were stressed about are suddenly just in the background and it's uh, it's it's a weird thing but it's become somewhat helpful for me uh, going through those experiences because every time you know this was a, this was a reminder you know when i came out of this again it reminded me what it was like when i had cancer and you come out of it and you really sort of start to take stock of what's important in life and try not to stress about the little things wow. it's, it's mm. a great wow. lesson sometimes you have to learn it the hard way as you did but the fact is, listen, I mean, um, you're, you're absolutely one of the funniest out there. Uh, and you drove a long distance to be here so people should take advantage of their opportunity to see you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, tonight, Helium Comedy Club, 815. There's a show tomorrow night at 8 o'clock as one. You can go to heliumcomedy.com uh, to get those tickets. Um, Tom, it is great to see you. We have another guest we have to get yeah, to. So, thanks, guys. Yeah. Uh, have a great show tonight. I think tonight. we've covered everything. So uh, We hit a lot. <laughs> yeah. It was great. No, it was like, this is your life. This yeah. is great. No, <laughs> but, no I appreciate it. Thanks uh, so much, guys. Uh,